Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now if you've been watching this channel and you've watched any of my City Skylines 1 videos, you'll know I created the engineer's dream, Engertopia. So today we're going to be recreating this. We're going to be starting a new game. Now we need to pick a map that is perfect for Engertopia. Oh and honestly I feel like Waterway Pass could be the one. It gives me Timberborn as vibes. So of course Engertopia 2 is the name and controversially I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the theme North American but I'm gonna drive on the left hand side <laughs> just to really confuse people right so here we are here is Engertopia it's June 2023 let's hit pause and let's just take a look at the surroundings we've got a huge river coming through sadly there's no there's no bridges there is a pretty filthy bridge in the background though check out that fair play but yeah we've got a road connection we've got power connection which is quite handy up in this corner we have a bit of a lake going on and then obviously we've got the sprawling sprawling countryside to build into this map is huge so we're going to be playing this somewhat legit so we've got to unlock everything we've got to keep an eye on our cash flow and i want to try granted some of you will resist this and that's okay i'm gonna try and teach you some actual like highway design principles and like drainage stuff as we go along if you get bored in the comments you can say just build a pukano that's all we care about but yeah for now let's let's get started so what do we have here we have a big highway up here we've got slip roads that come off so these are fast roads although actually is that is that the speed limit 55 wait what what unit is that in? Oh, I'm pretty sure it is miles an hour because look, that's 70 on that. We don't have like fives in the UK. Like speeds are, they're always rounded, which is quite strange because sometimes a five would make sense. Anyway, my point was cars are going to be bombing it down here. I mean, oh, the speed limit goes back up to 70. Okay, so cars are absolutely caning it down here. And then... <laughs> From 70 miles an hour, the speed limit drops to 35. And at that point where they drop, there's a zebra crossing for pedestrians to safely cross the road with 70 mile an hour incoming traffic. So yeah, not gonna lie, not, not the safest start to Engertopia. However, I haven't actually unlocked many different road types. Like I haven't got the highways if I wanna do something else. I mean, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to plop a roundabout down. I feel like that will be quite safe. Safe. Right, well, yeah, let's delete these. Let's see. Do we get any money? Okay, we get zero money back for that. But yeah, we'll go from our highway to our sort of normal road. Oh, no, I've got elevation and feet now because it's American. I got... Oh, man. I can't have foot. I need meters. All right, so anyway, we now drop down to 30 mile now. That's cool. And then I want to I want to go onto a roundabout. Now, you'll notice in real life with roundabouts, they never just like go like that. So if there's, if there's like two lanes of traffic coming down, you'll never see a roundabout about just plopped in the middle of that what you will see instead hopefully assuming the designer has designed it correctly you know, let me just flatten this out as well first because uh by the way we have access to these tools straight from the off and they cost nothing so what you'll notice is before the roundabout we'll have quite a sharp like little curve sort of like that and then we'll have our roundabout down here and what that does for anyone that's going too fast or just not paying attention they'll be bombing it down this road and look Look, they'll see oh there's a corner better better slow down for the corner and go around the corner and then oh there's a roundabout and because they've already slowed down for the corner they're already slowed down for the roundabout whereas before when it was just a straight line people could just bomb it and they would go absolutely flying over a roundabout uh, just like this footage i found where someone did exactly that which is pretty terrifying <laughs> This isn't a clip from GTA. This is real. Anyway, since this is engineering the home of Engertopia, we are making the entrance safe. So we have done that. We then need a exit arm to get back up to that road. So we end up with something like that. That's cool. That's nice and safe. And then we're good to add our first road. Now, what I want to try and do on this is be somewhat realistic. So there's sort of like a hierarchy of roads. Uh, we've got the highways, which take people very fast from one point to another. There's nothing along those. We'll then have our arterial roads. Now, these are sort of like the arteries. Now, you want these to be as big as possible. And I mean, for now, we're sort of stuck with just a four-lane road. But we definitely want that to happen from the main entrance to our city. And actually, I should probably think about, like, where are we... Where am I actually going with these? I feel like I probably want to head, like, down this way. And then perhaps add another roundabout. And then just send these, like, one over that way, one over 
over this way. And these are going to like spread the traffic to like the places people want to be. So I probably should have done this with my other arm, but we're going to try and add that bend on. And then I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it'd be nice to see, it'd be nice to see contours on this, this view. Because I couldn't really tell how, how steep this was. We got some like divoting going on. Still, we'll take that up this way. We'll take another one over there. Actually, how's money? Oh, money's fine. What? Roads are so cheap in this game. I've spent less than four grand. Okay, I'm not going to complain at that. But yeah, so from above, we have our arterial roads in. We then want from those like collector roads, they're called. And basically, they take they take the traffic from various areas to these arterial roads. Uh, in the UK, we also call them like distributor roads because they distribute people to various places. I mean, they would be sort of like a wide version of these. Or maybe they would be the four lane roads and then this would be like upgraded to a, like, like a six lane or something. Anyway, we can always upgrade those later. So I guess to start, well, where do I actually want to start? I don't know. Just up here might be a good spot. Now, junctions, if they're not signalized, you generally, you want to be a little bit careful about where you place them. Like, outside of a bend is pretty good. Inside of a bend, not so much. That is because as you pull up to this, you can see, like, really far. This is called your visibility splay. And basically, you just got to make sure, like, nothing is in there. Whereas if our junction was on, like, this side of the road, as we look left, can you see, like, you can't really see as far. Like, imagine if there was, like, bushes or, like, trees growing in this verge. Like, you really, you wouldn't be able to see. Like, you just, you can't see as far. Hence, generally, junctions should go on outside of bends because you've got that lovely, clear view of what's coming. But if there's traffic lights, it doesn't matter too much. And actually, I've just realized what I've done. I've put in a, this is a one-way road. So, we'll replace that with a two-way road. There we go. So, there's our traffic lights so people don't just come flying out. But that's cool. Anyway, from our distributor road, we then have the local roads. Now, the local roads are like the roads that like people live on or like where shops are and stuff. I mean, you can put them on these collector roads as well. But uh, gen I mean, generally like brand new areas this large, they don't get made in the world. Like places generally have been around for a long, long time and they slowly get bigger. Roads slowly get upgraded and stuff. However, there are countries like, for example, the Middle East, where they do just spring up cities in the middle of the desert from nothing. Uh, so this sort of hierarchy does happen. Uh, and I actually helped design one in Qatar. I did 30,000 gully placements. That was fun. Gullies are like the gratings on the side of roads that collect rainwater, in case you're wondering, by the way. Anyway, we now have our distributor road. You'll notice I've put like little bends in. You might be asking yourself, particularly any Americans watching this, why haven't you just done a straight road, you idiot? Like clearly the, the land's pretty flat. You're not trying to dodge like anything major. What are you doing? Well, what we try and do, we try and make, at least in the UK, this is. Bear in mind, all my all my road knowledge is UK-ish. Uh, for safety, we do actually try and like give roads like a bit of like variety, not just have them straight. And uh, when you're doing like a risk assessment for like to work out like where safety barriers need to go, uh, something like a factor that actually affects that is is it just a straight road where someone could just get bored and like fall asleep or get distracted, or uh, is there like visually stuff going on? Does the road like move a bit just to keep the the brain a bit more active? Uh, in this case it wouldn't really matter because there's literally a junction there. You're not going to turn around, like literally drive into a straight road and then instantly fall asleep. I mean, you might do. But yeah, from here, we want our local roads. Now, what I was thinking of doing, I might, I might do a grid only because I have sort of found in this game, if I try and like keep things curvy, I get a bit too much grass going on and I want to make this place dense. So like if I come off and go, I don't know, up to there-ish, can then grid all of that and look at all the grid space in there. That is beautiful. Yeah, and what I'm going to do, because from this junction, this is a little bit too close. I'm actually going to delete that road. Oh, no, I've just I just ripped a hole in the space time continuum. Oh, my bad. My bad. There we go. All fixed. But yeah, we don't we don't want junctions to be like too close to each other. So again, I've done it this way. I think it should be fine. I've just noticed actually. <laughs> I've, I've built literally where the trees are. Like all this barren grassland where I could have built. Absolutely nothing there. But no, the engineer decides we got to take down some trees. Anyway, something else I really, really dislike is crossroads. Like particularly this one. I mean, there's no... Everyone gives... What? <laughs> That's carnage. That's got it in tears. So we either need to roundabout these up like that. Gotta love a roundabout. Or since these are like local roads, that's probably a bit excessive. 
good. So I'm better off just deleting all of that and then making my connections to the distributor road. Like make them make them happen not at the crossroad. So we just got junction and then junction. I think that's pretty good. And also I could probably add some extra roads like up there and up there. Right now that is our first grid area. And I think this is going to be our residential area as well. So we'll just start painting in some low density residentials. All right, that is good. They are being built. The cranes are doing their business. Uh, we've got a bit of commercial demand. So this is where shops and things can go. And to be honest, I might shove these like on these entrances and on the, the distributor roads as well. Front roads will be shops because then everyone has to pass the shops to go home. And when they leave home, they've got to pass the shops to go to work. I think that's going to be convenient for people. And we're all about convenience in Engitopia. Anyway, next up, we do need to think about uh, what people actually need to survive, at least in somewhere as aspiring as Engitopia. They need electricity. They're also going to need water. Now, since our pylon from the outside comes in there, and this is where our residential area is, I think what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to shove a transformer down here, and then we're going to take our electricity from the outside world for now. We're not actually going to produce our own. And then this will power all of these houses and businesses going up here, at least until we start producing our own electricity. All right, so what else do we need? We have industrial demand. People need industry. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. People have poo and water demands. I forgot about that as well. <laughs> It's a good thing I'm not a real engineer anymore. Anyway, in City Skylines 2, you can see all the pipes. They're already under the ground. And honestly, it's one of my biggest bugbears because they follow the road. They're curved. We don't have curved pipes in the real world. I mean, there might be like a gentle curve on a gravity sewer. But like, it would be so small, it would be straight on a drawing. Like, look at the state of those curved pipes around the roundabout. Oh, it makes me angry. It makes me angry. So yeah, anyway, we, we need to find a place for our sewage to go. Now, I don't really, I don't like polluting straight into the river. What way is the river flowing? It's flowing, okay, it's flowing down there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the bridge downstream all pooey. I don't want to do that. By the way, look at the PR of the water department. We're experiencing some problems with the water pressure at the moment. Please stand by. Yeah, the problem is I've, I've completely ignored it. <laughs> I am gonna I am gonna do it. I said I wouldn't, but we are just gonna pump raw sewage straight into the river. So it will take our sewage pipe. I mean, to be honest, I might just finish this road and then connect straight up to it. So arterial road to there, sewage pipe from there down to there. So now everyone can poo. Lovely. And yeah, I do I actually feel quite oh there it goes. There it goes. It's flowing. I do actually feel quite bad that we're polluting the river. But uh, for now, that's just how things have got to work. Anyway, look, everyone's everyone's asking about, what about my drinking water? Well, we've got a couple of solutions. We can have a water pumping station, which we're used to from the old game. There's also water towers, which we've seen before. Yeah, these cost quite a lot to maintain, so probably not the best idea. And then we've also got this, a groundwater pumping station. So if you look on the map, there's loads of like blue blobs. They're all groundwater sources. So so we could pump this groundwater and start drinking that. What does this cost? 40 grand to build and then 20 grand upkeep. And it pumps just under 20 million gallons a month. Oh, why am I still in Imperial Stupid American? All right, screw the miles per hour. We're back to metric. Oh, there we go. It pumps 75,000 meters cubed a month. Uh, if we do the, the water pumping station, it pumps more water. It costs less to build and its upkeep is less. Okay, we'll go with that instead. And what I'm thinking rather than pump from the river i might pump from this like lake thing up here because this is this is higher than our city whereas the river is lower so if we use the river we'd have to be pumping that water like uphill whereas from here we can just use gravity and gravity is our friend because gravity does not require pumps so we need to do a road from here so i'm just going to do a little dirt road. Try and weave between some trees and then just connect that to the rest of the city. And then does that carry it carries electricity? Does it carry pipes? Oh, it does as well. Sweet. Okay. So we are now pumping water out of this lake straight into people's homes. I'd love to see it. I, I need a, I need an industrial area. So I'm going to do that over this way, I think. Because like, this is, this is where our poo is anyway. So as before, distributor road down here. 
it. And then from this, we'll have our local roads. Now, what I want to try and do, you can build like keys in this game. Not key E Y, but Q U A Y. Yeah, and it's a it's a bit finicky. If I turn off snapping completely, if you increase the elevation slightly, we can then put like a nice little C wall along here. And that is pretty handy, uh, particularly as this is going to be our industrial area. It just makes things look a bit, a bit cleaner. So uh, things are going to get dirty down here. So we've got to do some connections onto this. And then we can just start zoning up with the industrial. So we're going to have that along the edge. And uh, this is where people can work. So decent. In the meantime, have a look at all the houses. Loads of people going in. In fact, there's now loads of demand as well. So we'll keep zoning up some of these at the back. And then things are going well, except for, remember, we're not making electricity. So we are importing 800 kilowatts, uh, which obviously is costing us some money per hour. But yeah, to be honest, I feel like this is going pretty well. You can see as people join the city, we've got the roundabout, we've got the swerve making them slow down. Love to see it. They come along the, the arterial roads to side are you going to go live? Are you going to go to work? All these people are going to their houses. You've taken a caravan to your new house. You don't need a caravan, mate. You're not Danny Aaron's. But yeah, then they come down the distributor road and then to the local roads to get to their actual houses where they live. Okay, nice. What I'm thinking now, I gotta, I do need to get a bit more XP so I can progress. So is it worth getting a small coal power plant on the go? They say small. It's, that, it's huge. <laughs> but I could shove one like sort of here-ish. And yeah, if I do, we're now a tiny village. So we got 600 grand. We've got some progression points. Uh, we've unlocked a load of stuff, which is cool. Oh, we've unlocked a bridge. We've unlocked a bridge. And yeah, I'm just wondering. I need, oh, I need two points to get to the incinerator. I'm not sure I'll be able to get there very quick. Not gonna lie. Oh, wow. Hang on. I didn't realize what the ground was doing. I built this entire area on like the steepest part of the claim. Why didn't I landscape this? Landscaping's free now, Matt. I'll tell you what. Hold fire. Oh, look at that softening. That is is, that is some decent contours. All right, okay. Now we've got a bit of space around here, which means I can quite easily just grab some pylons and then bring them over this way to connect to that. And now we're making electricity and we're connected to the grid. So if we're making excess, we'll be selling that back to the grid. Look at those fumes. That is the site of progress. All right, anyway... <laughs> This is like the dodgiest. Like, look at look at that bin. How is that bin staying there? I should probably I should probably level all of this to be honest. Oh, why didn't I level it first? I like a challenge. That is the trouble. I do like a challenge. I mean, over that way, it does look a bit flatter. All right. Anyway, we got someone complaining over here. What do you want? Waiting for a hearse. A hearse has not arrived, despite one having been called quite a while ago. Oops. Let's pause. Uh, yeah, we have we have people dying. We don't have any death care, so I need a cemetery. The so question is where. Where should I put cemetery? All right, I've shoved up here. I feel like it made sense to go somewhat close to the lake. Um, I am. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a decent person though. I'm gonna try and like plant some trees in here. Like, these only start as saplings, but these will grow. I can like shove some bushes down in front as well, just so that like when people come to the cemetery to mourn like the architects that have passed on, they're not looking up and seeing like a horrible, horrible pumping station. These trees will grow. That will be covered up. We can sit on this bench looking at the architects that didn't make it and thank the heavens that we chose engineering rather than architecture because we get to live in a lovely place like this. Right, so the hearse should now come and take that dead person. Uh, who actually lives here, by the way? Let's have a look. 25 Foggy Street. So, residents. The two dogs live there. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So, these are the people that live there. There's Barry and Bella, the dogs. But then their owner, Aaron Serrano, he's deceased. Oh, no. The dogs have lost everything. The dogs are on there. What's going to happen to the dogs? Oh, no. I can't hack this. This game just got dark. Where's the damn hearse? Where's the hearse? <laughs> Vehicles in use. Zero out of 15. What? Where are they? Oh, wait, no. They're gone. No, where's Bella? Where's Barry? No. <laughs> Oh, what happened to the dogs? Oh, this is this is upsetting me now. That's <laughs> this is not cool. All right, anyway, let's just hit pause a sec because look, there's lots of demand. We got some medium density demand finally. So I might sort of try and fill in like some of these areas a bit more. Like if we take a road up the side of this, then this could be like a nice little medium density zone. Uh right next to the pylons and transformers, but at least they'll have good electricity. We'll then add some more low density, like 
like up the side of the cemetery like that and a bit of medium up that edge. So I'm sort of going to try and get my medium houses to shield like the road noise from everyone else. I'm sure they won't mind. All right, then we're going to need some actual health care just to uh, try and slow down the rate that people are dying. So <laughs> we need a medical clinic. I feel like it makes sense to have this on the on the distributor road. It's going to get like a lot of through traffic. And yeah, so if I shove that there, then that should allow people to get to this fairly quickly. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I've done there. All right, we've got more demand coming in. It may be worth expanding this direction as well as perhaps getting some like some beachside properties down this way because I did the we did the industrial promenade maybe we can do like a, a lovely pedestrian promenade and I don't like doing grids but they're so easy to draw like look at how quickly I can add all these this is quite cool all right so commercial along the edge there so that's the distributor road on oh, that literally wiped I only did like three buildings and there's no more demand you know then start getting some houses in I don't know why I started in the middle but we did oh i just realized we got crossroads everywhere Ugh. i mean actually this could be a good test we can see if the right is better for traffic or the left the crossroads or the t-junctions all right anyway we're now a small village which means loads more progression points Ooh, and rather than incineration should i be going with the recycling center or should i not use my progression points on these at all and instead put them into education because that is the cornerstone of engineering and then perhaps i could make an architect themed area for the land <laughs> can't lie i'm leaning towards that solution oh also look i've got seven map tiles to unlock okay right well this is just the start of our engitopia journey i imagine there's gonna be lots of shenanigans happening but for the start i'm i'm sort of trying to play as realistically as i can we'll see how long that lasts though but yeah for now i'll say peace love and bridges and engitopia bye guys